Hey everyone, I'm back with a new project. Um, for those that have been subscribers and been following my channel, you know that I said that I was going to build a rocket stove with a customer. Um, this is the initial burn chamber mock-up kind of design. Um, this is going to change substantially. Um, but basically, because both me and the customer are new to rocket stove technology, the goal right now is to explore the technology, find out what is working, what is not working, um, why why something works and why something doesn't work uh, so that we can maximize the design to be as efficient as possible. Okay, the, the concept behind a rocket stove is, is real simple. Think of it like a catalytic converter in your car's exhaust system. The idea is for the catalytic converter gets so hot that as the exhaust and the fumes and the flammable pollutants run through it that the catalytic converter will burn that stuff. So you have your fuel that's being burnt in your engine, but because your engine is not very efficient, <clears throat> you have the exhaust coming out that still has fuel in the exhaust. The exhaust is flammable, and your catalytic converter is burning that flammable gas off. In a rocket stove, the idea is to make the engine, which is the, the burn chamber, as efficient as possible so that we don't have any toxic gases and things like that going out through the chimney or to minimize it anyways. And as well as doing that in the process create a substantial amount of radiant heat. Okay, so this is the basic burn chamber. You have a riser that's usually you're going to use fire bricks or something that that's going to hold the heat. You want it to you want it to to saturate and, and have a a tremendous amount of radiant heat coming off of it, where it's not going to to cool off very fast. Okay, so we we're using fire bricks for the meantime. Um, these are the one and a quarter inch by. Four, or one and a quarter inch by four and a half inch by nine inch fire bricks. We got about 23 inches of height for our burn chamber. And this right here is our fuel inlet. Right now we, we're, it's real crude and primitive. We're just using some sticks. We're not using like logs. We're just using sticks like this. Um, when you, when you, the fuel that a rocket stove uses doesn't use logs, um, or typically doesn't. You can you can split the logs, but you, you're going to need to split them down into to smaller stick size stuff, or you could just gather twigs or whatever the heck you want to burn in there. Um, you could actually even convert these to run off pellets or coal if, if you wanted to, and we're going to try to design ours to run off pellets. Um, just because there's there's an added benefit behind burning pellets, um, if you're using a gravity feed system, the pellets are you're you're less you're going to spend less time in front of the stove feeding it and adjusting things with a pellet setup than you would or would set up. Um, the the goal, my goal, is to design it where we'll have a hopper for the pellets that will hold at least 40 pounds, which is a, a full bag of pellets. And the goal would be to get that 40 pounds to last about 12 hours or more. <clears throat> so that you just pour it in and walk away and this thing will stay running. Um, stay running, stay running clean. You shouldn't have to mess with your, your air intake at all because it's going to constantly be the same consistent air fuel mixture. Um, that's the goal. That's my goal. Um, as far as the design, this is probably going to stay the same. The the riser, you know, we may we may end up building another one down the road so that we're using a better quality metal, probably stainless steel. Um, carbon steel will rot away, <clears throat> even if it's thick, it will eventually rot away. Um, so, we'll, but this is what we have here in the shop, so that's what we're using. Um, fire bricks. The fire bricks are a very good insulator, but they're also very good for radiant heat as well. Um, the idea, like I said, is to keep the inside of this from the burn where the, the fire actually starts is down in here, okay, in this particular design. There's other setups. 
Um, some of them, actually, the burn area is right in here, in the very bottom of this riser. Um, again, there's lots and lots of different setups. We're exploring all of it in this process. But right now in this setup, our burn area is right here. The flame runs across the bottom and then comes up. It doesn't come all the way out the top, or it could, but it, it shouldn't. Um, the flame should be about midway or so, maybe not even that. Um, <clears throat> but that, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, there's, it gets really complicated. Um, once we figure out this technology more and, and we explore it a lot more, um, I'll, I'll give you guys more clear-cut design ideas and things like that as far as what we're learning. Uh, and we'll just go from there. Um, my next step is to convert this feeder system into pellets um, so that we can gain consistency of our air fuel mixture. Um, the other goal is to increase the size of the burn chamber. As far as the, the air inlet, I think we're fine here, but the burn chamber, I want to increase the size to see if it makes any difference. Um, the other thing is we're going to be cutting this air compressor because this will eventually this will eventually go inside of this okay <clears throat> and I'll, I'll show you guys a drawing here at the end of the video so you can kind of get an idea the drawing is really really rough it's one it's an a, it's a slightly different design than this as far as how the air is how the fuel comes in the design you'll see in the in the 3d image the burn chamber is actually down in here so the you know Take the drawing as, as just kind of a grain of salt so that you can kind of just see what the basic construction of this is going to look like in the process. There's actually going to be a, a tube around this packed full of insulation between this and that tube. The exhaust comes up and then goes around that outside of that tube and down. And this will force it to go down because this will be over the top of everything. And then there will be an exhaust that comes out here in the bottom, where basically where that sticker is. Um, so my next step is to cut this along the bottom weld seam, get rid of this bracket off the top, cut the this top of this out an eight inch circle so I can put this inside of it. And then take some of this flexible exhaust and run from this into my existing chimney stack off of my barrel stove so that we can stop smoking ourselves out here in the shop <laughs> while we experiment and explore with this idea. This whole thing, the cover part, not the, not the part on the bottom, but the part that we cut off the top is going to be just set over the top of this burn chamber or this riser. Um, we'll use some center blocks or whatever to hold it in place, basically acting like a funnel for any kind of smoke that, that we have so it starts going out the chimney instead of just floating around here in my shop. <clears throat> so that's my next step. Um, like I said, I, I wanted to convert this over to pellets as well so that I can get a consistent air fuel mixture and, and, and start focusing more on, on that. If we can get that consistent air fuel mixture worked out, then we can start working on different designs as far as the burn chamber and the air inlet to, to maximize draft as well as um, maximize burn temperatures. So we're going to be monitoring the, monitoring the burn temperatures all over this. This area, this area, and this area are the hottest parts of this system in order. This area is the hottest, second hottest, third hottest. And everything else starts getting, gets really hot as well, but those are the hottest areas. <clears throat> With that being said, what I'm learning right now is that it might be in our best interest to actually place more insulation around this hot area so that it gets even hotter. Okay, um, but we'll, we'll see. Um, we're trying to design this where, where we can reproduce it or produce it in a much more efficient manner than what we have going on here. So that's what we have going on right now. Um, 
I know there's not a whole lot of detail on as far as showing you guys the build process of this and I'm probably not going to show too much of that in in this video series. It's more an exploration on the technology and, and showing you guys how how this is all how this all works. So maybe towards a, maybe once we figure out what works best, I might actually do some build videos of a of a production unit or, or something like that. We'll, we'll see. Um, again, this this is all exploration of technology, so we'll go from here. Um, thanks for watching. Like always, subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment below, leave us your thoughts, ideas, whatever you want. Um, like our Facebook page, Alvarez Metalworks. Um, You'll find the link in the description. If you're on our website, the link to our Facebook page is at the top. The link to our YouTube channel is at the top, as well as our Twitter account. Um, if, you, if you happen to use Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter as well. So, Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. I need to go get warm. <laughs> Bye.